I'm here with Dr. Franz Neihuber from the University of Salzburg in Austria. He's with the Department of Forensic Molecular Biology at the Institute of Legal Medicine. This is one of four laboratories in Austria that are contracted to upload samples to the Austrian National DNA Database. The lab processes over 1,500 samples a year and has a 40% hit rate making it one of the most successful databases in the world. Welcome, Dr. Neuhipper. What was the reason that your laboratory brought in YSTR technology? Because it improved the quality of, of our analysis and it raised the number of successful investigations, especially in sexual offenses. So if you're talking about sexual offenses, what usually comes to mind is sperm, which is pretty easy to detect and you get good autosomal results from. But uh, in fact, sperm is rather the exception than the rule. So uh, in most cases, we get uh, non-sperm traces like saliva, uh, traces of skin under fingernails, uh, contact traces, touch traces, and so on. And with this kind of traces, you usually get mixtures, mixtures of male and female DNA. And it might be impossible to produce a male autosomal DNA profile because of the high female background. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly where the YSDRs come in. So we are using them predominantly for analyzing mixtures of male and female DNA with a high female background. Could you share any details on an interesting case challenge that YSTRs has helped you to overcome? Yes, we have a lot of uh, cases where YSTRs were the key to success. Uh, for example, uh, we had two attempted rapes several years ago, which made us change our strategy for analyzing YSTRs. Uh, the first attempted rape was a very brutal uh, rape, attempted rape. Uh, it was a young girl and she was attacked and the uh, uh, offender was dressed all the time. So we could not expect sperm traces. What we found was contact traces, touch traces, but with a very high female component. So it was not possible to produce an autosomal DNA profile from the male component. But we were able to uh, get a Y chromosomal profile and we had a suspect and it was excluded. So he was set free again. And a few months later, we had another very brutal uh, attempted rape. But this time we were lucky because we got autosomal results. We found the DNA of the suspect on the clothes of the victim and vice versa. So basically that case was solved, the offender uh, said, okay, it's true, but he denied to the first case. So uh, we additionally typed YSGR markers from the second case to link it to the first case and we got a match. And confronted with this analysis, the suspect also confessed to the first case. And that was the point where we said, okay, from now on, we're doing YSGRs uh, in all, in any case of sexual offense and with any trace we get in a sexual offense. And this strategy of a combined autosomal YSTR analysis proved to be very successful in the next, the following years. Very interesting. Um, there's a new tool within YSTR uh, chemistry, which is rapidly mutating Ys. Um, what value do you believe that the rapidly mutating YSTR markers bring to analysis in forensic cases? Rapidly mutating YSTR markers are very interesting for several reasons. Uh, you might uh, have a higher probability to differentiate between closely related males, so like father's son or brothers. Uh, in fact, in our population study, we had five brother pairs and we could distinguish two of them by rapidly mutating markers. Uh, but that's not the only thing. Another important point is that rapidly mutating markers are amongst the most diverse YSTR markers. So they really push the evidential value of uh, YSDRs uh, very much. Um, in cases where you don't see any male DNA in your initial quantification step, would you typically proceed to doing a YSTR analysis anyway? At the moment we are doing so, but this strategy may change in the near future because at the moment we're performing YSTR analysis in any case of sexual offense and with any trace we get. But uh, recently we introduced uh, Quantify La Trio and uh, what we're doing at the moment is to check if zero Y in Quantify La Trio corresponds to zero Y in Wi-Fi La Plus. Mm -hmm. 
And that's what it looks like. And so maybe we will change this strategy in the near future. Very interesting. And thank you very much, Dr. Neuhuber, for sharing your experiences with us. And to learn more, please visit us at thermofisher.com forward slash HID.